On the 12th day of October, Halloween gave to me 12 zombie soldiers, 11 angels wrestling, 10 ghostly hitchhikers, 9 basement clowns, 8 vampire cruises, 7 silent heroes, 6 prequel bloodstones, 5 diabolical fledglings, 4 vampire pianists, 3 dead professors, 2 Michelle actresses, and a radu drooling something bloody. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to the 12th day of the 31 days of Halloween. Shockingly, almost halfway through our list, which is insane, right? Oh, man, time do fly. But we have a lot of good stuff to come. Uh, and before we get to that, we're going to do one of our one-off episodes here. And then tomorrow we're going to launch into a different series. Uh, this is Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. It is a recent release, a prequel to the recent adaptation of Pet Cemetery uh, that was not very good. And uh, the, the one thing you can say about that new version of Pet Cemetery is that John Lithgow as Judd Crandall is great. So what would happen if you took <laughs> the, I don't know, three or four pages of the book where Judd Crandall tells the story about Timmy Baderman and how, uh, hey, there was this guy that buried someone up at the pet cemetery and my parents had to put him down what if you turn that into its own movie which we have seen already on this list with the last voyage of the demeter that you can take a sliver of a book and make it into a perfectly fine movie i don't have a problem with that what i have a problem with is a, a movie that feels uh kind of lazy across the board and this is one of those times where I feel bad because I know people worked hard to make this movie good and it didn't work out. Spoilers, this movie is not very good. But the, the basic premise of it is, as has been intimated here, is that you have Judd Crandall as a young man and his uh, would-be wife, Norma. They are about to leave town, head to the Peace Corps, and... You know, this is late 60s when, you know, all of the uh, Vietnam stuff is going on. There is some indication that maybe his parents, played by, uh, if you can believe it, Samantha Mathis and Henry Thomas of Haunting of Hill House fame. Not Samantha Mathis, but, uh, you know, Henry Thomas is in that Mike Flanagan crew now. And and good, because he's... Uh, he's one of the better things about this, this movie. Um, but uh, anyway, so they're taking off for the Peace Corps, Judd and Norma are. And the, uh, what I was getting at was that uh, Henry Thomas and Samantha Mathis may have fixed it with a local doctor so that he, his number was never going to come up for the draft. And meanwhile, you have one of his childhood friends, Timmy Baderman, who has come back from the war our word on the street is that he has come back from the war and there is another friend named Manny that he is estranged from and it's kind of unclear why I'm sure they say in the movie but I just didn't really care uh, which is a sad thing to say but there was a point where that relationship is being reignited and I was just like ah, eh, I don't care why they were estranged I'm glad they're back together I guess as friends and Manny has a, a sister as well named Donna, and they live together. Apparently, their parents are out of the picture, and they are uh, Native American, which doesn't really come into play other than uh, Donna seems to be in touch with the Micmac burial ground to some extent. And uh, the, to its credit, the movie opens up with Timmy Baderman's father, played by the X-Files own David Duchovny uh, is, is Mr. Baderman, in, in this case, Bill Baderman. And he has buried his son, who, you know, apparently came back in a box. And I can't believe that nobody had heard that the son died. That, you know, he just shows up and they're like, oh yeah, he's back from the war. Uh, it seems like, because they give you details about who died back then. 
You know, they would send notices and, and names ended up in papers and whatnot as far as like, oh, look who sacrificed their life for the good of democracy and so forth. Anyway, uh, that apparently didn't happen here because everybody just hears Timmy Baderman is back and he is. Uh, so, you know, we don't waste time uh, futzing around with should I or shouldn't I? Like David Duchovny is pretty quick to, uh, in the opening scene even, to uh, put his uh, kid in the ground. And also, as soon as the, the kid comes out of the ground, an arm shoots up and immediately kills the family dog. So now we got another Pet cemetery dog uh, returned from the grave as well, because, you know, that's how it goes. And one thing that they don't do is they take that piece of the book and, and movie where Judd Crandall is talking about Timmy Baderman, but not his dog. Cause Judd Crandall had a dog that his father buried up at the pet cemetery. And that was where, you know, sometimes dead is better. Uh, that is partly where that came from. You know, this idea that, Oh, I had a dog and my father loved me and, and wanted me to have my dog so much that he took him up there. But when the dog came back, I didn't really like it was wrong. And I didn't really like the dog anymore. And that's, you know, sometimes that is better. So that doesn't happen in this movie. We're ignoring that part of it. So Judd is on his way out of town. Hears that Timmy is back, but it's like, ah, fuck that. We're not going to, uh, you know, poke that particular bear. We're just going to head out of town, me and Norma are. And on their way out of town, they almost run over the Baderman's dog. And when they get out of the car, Norma and Judd do, they realize that, hey, there is something wrong with this dog. So they take it back to the uh, house, the Baderman house, and tell Timmy, like Timmy's hiding behind the screen porch so you don't get a clear look at him uh, at, at first. And they're like, hey, get, Timmy, I heard you were back. Good. I'm glad you're okay. Hey, I think there's something wrong with your dog. And then the dog, they look around, the dog's missing. And Timmy gives judd some shit about not going to war in the first place and he's clearly like mean right like he's, he's kind of mean spirited and when the back is turned out comes the dog again that attacks norma chews up her arm pretty good they have to get timmy out to pull the dog off of her and as well as i think david duchovny shows up in this scene as well to be like you know you, you guys get on out of here uh, he says in an accent that I'm using that he doesn't. <laughs> and uh, so Norman ends up in the hospital. Judd's trip to the Peace Corps is delayed. And he also starts telling his dad, like, hey, there's something wrong with Timmy Baderman. Like, he came back and from uh, the war, and he's kind of an asshole. And also this dog that w we've known all our lives attacked Norma, which seems crazy. And uh, his father... Judd's father is like, uh, yeah, let me, uh, let me call a meeting then. And here's where the movie starts to lose me. All that stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, well, this isn't great, but it's interesting. And the guy who's playing Timmy Baderman is an actor named Jack Mulhern. And he's got a, a good, like creepy vibe, you know, like, like a sense that he is not well in the head. Uh, and because when the dog is attacking Norma, he just kind of watches and the expression he has is this kind of dumb glee at seeing this. And, and that's pretty good. That's good pet cemetery stuff. But, uh, once Henry Thomas is informed that, oh, you know, the, this thing I knew this dog, uh, has, has gone South, then all of a sudden it's time for the local constabulary to get involved and not the police force. There is a secret society in Ludlow that just hangs out waiting for shit to happen. They hang out waiting for, you know, uh, people to bury some shit in the pet cemetery that they got to put down. Cause they talk about dogs and whatnot. And it's, it's Henry Thomas. It's a, a woman who might be the mayor or something, the local sheriff. And by the way, Pam Greer, plays Marjorie Washburn, the one of the locals who's in on all of this. And then another guy, it doesn't really matter because they don't make that much of a difference in this movie. They just show up later to get murdered. And 
Pam Greer uh, gets attacked by the dog pretty early on. And she ends up killing the dog off screen. So, you know, because we think that she's dead. But anyway, they they show up uh, at a diner to meet and talk about this. And I think it's Henry Thomas who says, like, I, uh, I went up and checked the the Micmac burial ground. Looks like a dog sized hole. Also a bigger one. At least as big as a dog. And everyone decides, like, oh, we're on high alert now. There's some there's some pet cemetery shit going on. And there's a bit of, you know, cat and mouse with Timmy Baderman and these other folks. Because the Micmac burial ground seems to understand that, uh, you know, you got to keep on, on the down low. Whatever it is that possesses these people. Uh, Timmy ends up killing Donna and burying her in the Micmac burial ground. And she comes back to um, go after Norma. And in the meantime, we get kind of the meat of the movie, which is all about how there is a, a, a group of families. And, and Timmy Baderman writes down the last names of a bunch of these families that were instrumental in the foundation of Ludlow. But also knew from Jump that, hey, the, like w the original guy that the town is named after uh, apparently got possessed by the Micmac spirits and started eating people. And I, I don't know if he was buried in the pet cemetery or not. Uh, and there's also a bit about like how they pray to animal spirits. And that's why the pet cemetery is outside the Micmac burial ground. And it's just, it's too much lore. This is a case of like... Whereas Last Voyage of the Demeter was, wasn't was trying to reinvent Dracula. It was just trying to say like, oh, what happened on this ship? What what if a Dracula were loose to run amok on a ship at sea and you basically made an alien with vampires? And I'm great with that. That was great. I had a real good time with Last Voyage of the Demeter. One of the better horror movies I've seen this year, as a matter of fact. Pet Cemetery Bloodlines tries to explain what and why with the Micmac burial ground. And you don't need to do that. You don't need to explain why these people are, you know, on, on watch on duty in this town for all these years. And that, you know, Judd, uh, Judd's father is trying to get him out of town to save him from this fate with, of, of being on eternal vigilance when it comes to this town, like fucking move. It is not <laughs> your job. You know, report this to the authorities. You know, like, they will believe you. Trust me, if this is such a, a, a duty. And, you know, the thing with the book and, and even the original movie is that it's just this kind of quiet secret that the town knows, like, hey, or a few people in town know. And there is a, a sense that the Micmac burial ground or the powers behind it influence people and try to get the secret told. So that it can, you know, have an out to get to reach out and influence uh, people and to, you know, create chaos and whatnot. And so, you know, when Judd tells uh, Lewis Creed in the book and the movie about, you know, the pet cemetery, he's even like, man, I wonder if it's the burial ground trying to get me to do this, to, to give you like allow you to give your cat back to this child because it sets in motion, obviously this, you know, series of horrible events, but it's not like there was a, a, you know, a group, a, a secret cabal of people w checking out Lewis Creed and his family to be like, Oh shit, we got to go in there and clean stuff up. It just doesn't add up. Or that Judd is just the last person on the watch or something. And he, even then it, you know, it, like if that's what, his life was why was he not especially after gage dies why was he not like you know not just i'm gonna give you this speech let me tell you this long and involved story about how there's a group of people that have constantly been on watch here in ludlow for just the kind of shit you're thinking about and let me tell you more about the story of timmy baderman that almost killed my wife norma and like all of this it just doesn't add up it's, it feels like a movie that exists outside of the rest of the lore while still building a bunch of, of lore about this town 
and these families that have stood eternal watch over the Mi'kmaq, Mi'kmaq burial ground, which, by the way, also ignores the fact, even though there are Native Americans in this movie, of like, well, so what were the Native Americans doing with it all this time? You know, were they, <laughs> were they just like, hey, this ground is bad? And and they say, or Judd says, uh, that this la- uh, deadfall to separate the Pet Cemetery from the Mi'kmaq burial ground was built by those people that they very intentionally built the the deadfall to keep people away as opposed to what I always thought it was, which was just this natural thing that you cross over this border from the normal to the not normal. And there is a natural border to that, but whatever it just, it all bothered. It all got under my skin a little bit because it just felt like unnecessary world building. But yeah, so Donna comes after uh, Norma steals her, takes her to the barn. Uh, D- Dan, uh, you know, Judd's father, Henry Thomas, the rest of the, you know, secret squad assemble along with Judd, who is now like, I've got to go help because Timmy Baderman has Norma and I've got to go save her as well as Manny, his, his old friend who's reunited and has now lost a sister to the Mi'kmaq burial ground. Uh, and his sister's all zombified as well. And, you know, they descend on the farmhouse. A bunch of people die. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, at the end of the day, Norma is saved. Although, credit to Natalie Allen Lind, who plays Norma, uh, who allowed herself to be covered in mud for what must have been hours and hours to shoot this movie. And so, I don't know, if you got a weird thing for seeing women in mud pits... Uh, this movie's for you, I suppose. I'm trying to think who would enjoy this movie as, as a rule. And anyway, at the end of the movie, David Duchovny is like, ah, I brought this boy into the world. I got to take him back out again because I fucked up. You know, I shouldn't have brought him back, but I'd lost my wife and I had nothing. And everybody else in town seems to be happy and have everything. But I'm poor and my son died. And yeah. So uh, he ends up burning the place down. Uh, Timmy, though, gets out. And so it's Manny that ends up putting him down, which seems odd. And they also say you have to shoot him through the eyes, which I think is a new bit of lore. I don't remember that being in the the Pet Cemetery remake, but maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, you have to get him in the eyes, and that's what kills him. And, and so Manny shoots him in the eyes, and... You know, Manny ends up leaving town instead of Judd and Norma. Judd and Norma uh, take over because uh, Judd's father has been killed. So, you know, they decide to stay in Ludlow and he assumes his father's place on the porch with his, you know, pack of cigarettes looking out over the town and worried at that, you know, something's going to come uh, out of the ground and, and spoiled, something spoiled will come out of the ground. And the thing that's really frustrating about all of this, right, is that Pet Cemetery is such an inherently scary idea, and there's so much you can do with it. And I think that, like I said, Mulhern as Timmy Baderman does a good job of being that kind of, like, dumb evil that is just a force of malevolence and chaos, and that's all he is, and that's all he will ever be. And is getting worse, but there's a whole lot of, like, oh, I'm going to you know, eat the local deer and stuff. It It's just a little too cannibalistic or animalistic uh, as opposed to being just a pale imitation of a person that I think is kind of the scary idea is like, this is a an evil thing pretending to be human as opposed to, you know, I, I am this zombie version of myself that can't resist some intestines when they are put in front of me and that I'll eat people and stuff. I, I wasn't totally down for all that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not good. And it, it feels kind of lazy at times. It like the scenes just kind of meander and don't really get to the point. And again, I, I keep going back to last voyage of the Demeter, which is longer and feels shorter. Because stuff continually is happening in that movie. And it's just better directed and better written. This is, I should point out, 
written and directed uh, at, by Lindsay Anderson Beer, who this is her first feature film direction. And she's known for writing a couple of television series and another feature that's a, like some high school story that I'd never heard of. So, you know, maybe horror just isn't her thing. Horror requires a certain kind of a, a certain kind of talent, right? You got to have a rhythm for it. You got to know what's scary. You got to know when to linger in a scene, when not to linger in a scene. Like the scene where Pam Greer, Greer gets attacked by the dog. It's such a quick scene where, you know, she hears something and then the dog comes for it and there's nothing, there's no tension built. There's nothing creepy about it. It's just not very good. Like, I think the, the shots themselves are not without you know, the, the composition of the shots are not without some level of artistry, but it's just, none, none of it comes together. None of it feels like it's connected in a way that's emotional or visceral. And yeah, it's a real bummer. I, I don't think there has been a very good Pet Cemetery movie made yet. I know a lot of people love uh, the original, the one with um, Herman Munster as, as Judd Crandall, um, which I, I don't disagree that Fred Gwynn is great as Judd Crandall. I just disagree that that movie as a whole is good. I don't think it's a great movie. I think it's okay. It's certainly better than this. I would re I would watch that version of Pet Cemetery all day long as opposed to watching this again. This was awful. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's a bummer that they still haven't gotten this quite right. And probably not in my lifetime. <laughs> I don't... I think I've resolved that I will not see the day when a good Pet Cemetery movie is made. And that's okay. That's all right. Um, all right, well, you know, I guess it's good to see Pam Greer. Tomorrow we will begin with a brand new series of uh, movies, a, a, a franchise, if you will, that I'm excited to talk to you about. And we'll get into that uh, tomorrow. So have yourself a, uh, a fantastic Thursday. Uh, enjoy this uh, this crisp October weather, if you're in an environment like me where it's suddenly feeling like it's actually honest to goodness fall, the pumpkin latte is sprouting on the vine. Uh, I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, so yeah, uh, I will see you back here tomorrow for a brand new entry into the 31 days of Halloween, the 2023 edition. I will see you then. <laughs> <laughs>